The announcement coming as the state is about to reach 70% of people with at least one dose of the vaccine. That number stands at 69.9%. 61.3% have received their full vaccine. Okay, so it should be maybe we're there already, but uh, be any day now that the state will reach that 70% threshold that the governor has talked about. And when that happens, restrictions across the state will start loosening up again. Here to talk more about that is Upstate Global Health Director, Dr. Stephen Thomas. Dr. Thomas, thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah, thank you. It's good to see you. Well, let's get right to the big one right off the top. State Fair going to be open like usual. Um, how safe is it? How do you read it? What's your take on this? Well, you know, the, the risk is not zero, but uh, there's a couple things going for it. The, the first is that most of the activities occur outside, and we know uh, outdoors the risk of, of getting COVID is much, much less than when you're inside, 20-fold uh, less or, or more. Uh, the second is that we have highly effective vaccines that are available to everyone free of charge, right? And we know that they protect people. So if, uh, you know, it being outside and if you're vaccinated, I think your risk of attending is pretty low. Uh, but we do know that there are people who cannot be vaccinated. For them, the risk uh, continues because we still have about a third of uh, uh, the folks uh, in the state who aren't vaccinated. Um, and so I would wear masks if you're not vaccinated. All right, let's talk about benchmarks. We've hit basically the mark with at least 70% of New Yorkers 18 and up with at least one shot of the vaccine. So what does that mean to you? What's it mean for us with most restrictions coming off now? Well, the first thing it means is that, uh, you know, that's a good thing, right? And so there are a lot of people now that have a lower risk of getting infected or getting sick if they do get infected uh, and of ending up in the hospital. So we're gonna, we're gonna take some strain off the hospital, hospital systems, at least as it relates uh, uh, to COVID. So that's one thing. Uh, the other thing that it means is because we do know that people who are vaccinated have a lower risk of transmitting to other people if they do get infected, um, we do think that it's gonna lower overall everybody else's risk but that still means we have about 30 percent of people uh, adults uh, in new york and of course the younger kids um, who are not vaccinated which um which means we're still at risk for having virus being transmitted uh in the community so it's a great start but we really we really need to continue to push those numbers um doc what what's herd immunity in terms of percentage we, we hear that 70 to 90 percent range thrown out a lot a lot is that 70% with one shot? Because that's where we are. And is that good enough with just the one shot? Or, or do we just stop focusing on this idea of herd immunity? But is, so two questions, herd immunity and is 70% with one shot what we want to strive for? Do we just need to get to that two shot? Right. Yeah, well, you know, we do know that with one shot, about 10 days after you get your first vaccination, people are protected about 50%, right? You get two shots, it's going to be over 90%. Um, so you still want to get those two shots. Um, you know, I, I like focusing on herd immunity without focusing on the numbers because there are so many different factors that play into herd immunity and they're not static, right? They're constantly changing. And the percent is different depending upon what, uh, you know, what pathogen you're talking about, whether it's a virus, bacteria, uh, whatever. So I, I think, um, but herd immunity is a real thing. And so what I think people need to do is continue to push uh, their friends and family and colleagues uh, to consider being vaccinated, push that 70% as high as we can possibly go. And that means that people who can't be vaccinated, um, so people who have certain medical conditions that don't allow them to be vaccinated or our children who are less than you know 12 years of mm -hmm. age, uh, the rest of us can protect them while vaccines catch up to that age group. All right, pushing that 70% as high as we can go. And what is the motivation to keep growing that number? Yeah, the motivation is that, uh, you know, we still have variants circulating around the United States um, and they definitely seem to be more transmissible. And in some cases, they might be more virulent, meaning they can make people sicker than some of the original strains that came through uh, the United States. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is that there is um, variability around the country. So we're, we're great here at 70 percent, but there's lots of places where the number is much lower. And there's a lot of COVID going on in those places and people travel. Uh, so we will constantly have viruses being introduced into our community. And if people aren't vaccinated 
or if we see waning immunity due to the vaccines, uh, then we could cycle right back to where, you know, where we were before with the hospitals filling up with people with, with COVID and schools needing to close. And so I say, you know, don't let the virus put pressure on us. We need to put pressure on the virus and keep the schools open. Let's have a good summer and, and let's not have a return to where we were in uh, uh, 2020 and the beginning of 21. You mentioned variants. I want to ask you, how, how are we looking now with vaccines against variants, especially I think Delta uh, that it's seen in India, that seems to be in the United States now. So how effective are these vaccines against the various variants out there? Yeah, you know, this is kind of a good news story because uh, before we had any data, people were really wringing their hands about this. But the more data that we see coming from laboratories, uh, data that we see coming from the trials and what we call real world data. So d uh, data that's collected not in the context of a trial, but in, you know, the public actually being uh, uh, vaccinated. Um, the data is good. It's, it supports that these vaccines do have some level of uh, protection against these variants. It's not the same as against the original strains, but it's still quite good, north of 50%. Um, and so again, it's, it's like we've been talking about for a long time. It is a race to get as many people vaccinated as possible because it gives those variants less chance to spread and it reduces the chance that there are going to be new variants developing. All right, we're going to end on that good news story. Dr. Thomas, thanks again so much for being here. We appreciate your time and you, and, mm -hmm. and have a good rest of the week. Thanks, you too. Bye-bye.